The heightened interest and focus on civil liberties during, during the New Deal comes from a number of places. One, odd, interestingly enough, is from the labor movement itself, because for the first time in the New Deal, the federal government allied itself with the labor movement. Generally, the government had been much against it, sent troops to break strikes over and over again. President Roosevelt allied himself with the labor movement, and large numbers of workers voted for Roosevelt. And so the suppression of the right to organize, the use of private police against labor, the use of local ordinances uh, banning labor from organizing, comes to seem more outrageous in the 1930s because the federal government is now on the side of, uh, of, of efforts to organize workers into unions. Second of all, the rising tension with Nazi Germany, which of course leads eventually to our involvement in World War II against Germany, um, by the late 1930s, more and more people are hi highlighting civil liberties in the United States in contradistinction to Nazism. In other words, this is what makes American liberty distinct, unique. Over in Germany, they are suppressing violently, brutally, the right of dissent. Nobody can dissent in Hitler's Germany. Nobody can speak their peace. Over here, we allow civil liberties. This becomes part of a uh, contradistinction between Nazi Germany and the United States. And of course, in 1941, before the United States enters the war, Roosevelt gives his famous Four Freedoms speech. This is early 1941, but he's talking about the freedoms which, after the war, everybody has to enjoy throughout the world. And two of those are the basic civil liberties, freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And it shows the, how civil liberties have gotten themselves into our, the, uh, a central part of the definition of American freedom by this time.